Make sure you pause the video and reread the question before listening on. In part A, we have to determine the final angular speed of the two disks spinning together once they have coupled together. And to do that, we are going to use the conservation of angular momentum. As long as there is no net external torque on our system, we can say the initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum. And we recall that angular momentum, which is symbolized by L, is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular speed. Let's come down below and apply that principle so that we can solve for the final angular speed of the two disk system. Again, we can say the initial angular momentum of our system is equal to the final angular momentum of our system. We'll take the initial angular momentum and we'll break it up into two objects. We'll have the moment of inertia of the first disk times the initial angular speed of the first disk plus the moment of inertia of the second disk times the initial angular speed of that second disk. Notice, by the way, that we have used the letter I to represent both moments of inertia because the disks are identical. So we don't need to, for example, say I1 and I2 because that would indicate they have different values. No, the disks were identical, so their moments of inertia are also identical. And then we come over here and the disks have coupled together. Now when the disks couple together, we can actually add their moments of inertia. So we can say I plus I to represent the new moment of inertia of that two disk system times the final angular speed of that system. And that's what we're looking for. Now we recall that the disk that was dropped on top of the rotating disk had an initial angular speed of zero. So we're going to go I times zero here plus I times the initial angular speed of the rotating disk, which was 5.65 radians per second. And then over on the other side, we can simplify i plus i to just make 2i, of course, times the final angular speed. We can eliminate this term here. And then if we look carefully, we can actually divide both sides of the equation by the moment of inertia. And so those moments of inertia will cancel out. And then we're left with 5.65 radians per second is equal to two times the final angular speed of the two disk system. Of course, we'll just divide both sides by two. And when we do so, we will obtain an answer of about 2.83. And then this will be in radians per second. So that would be the final angular speed of the two disk system. And that's the answer to part A. We'll go back up to part B. And now a third disk is going to be dropped on the first two, and we again need to find the final angular speed. Let's take a look at that picture. Now, notice that the two disk system's initial angular speed will now be the value we obtained in part A. It's the 2.83 radians per second. We're going to drop a third disk on top of it, and then now we have a three disk system whose final angular speed we are seeking to calculate. We're going to use the conservation of angular momentum again, of course, so the initial equals the final angular momentum. Now, for the initial, we have the disk that's stationary, so we would have I multiplied by zero radians per second, because it is stationary initially, plus the two disk system. Now remember, the two disk system has a moment of inertia of two I and is spinning at 2.83 radians per second. And then they all join together, so we have a three disk system. Think about what the moment of inertia of the three disk system would be. And of course it would be three I, because now you have I plus I plus I. And then you're going to multiply that by the final angular speed of the three disk system. This term drops out. We can multiply the 2.83 by two. So then we're going to have, well, back to the 5.65 radians per second multiplied by I. This is equal to three I final angular speed. Let's divide both sides. Let's go for it. Let's do three I. We can just do this in one step. Now, if we do by three I, the I's and threes on the right-hand side cancel, these I's cancel. So basically then you're just doing 5.65 divided by three. And when you do that, you end up with 1.88 radians per second. And that would be the final angular speed of the three disk system and thus the correct answer to part B.